right, so let's get started by going over what all comes inside of your Mata Crochet Garden Kit. So let's open up this box and see what we've got. All right, so inside you will find first the crochet pattern in this nice, really well-printed little booklet for you. Next, you'll also see this QR code to getting to the video course, but I'm assuming that since you're here, you've already figured this one out. Then we have our skeins of yarn that we're gonna be using to create all of our cactus friends. These little tiny skeins for making the flowers. And of course, green for making all of our cactuses. Then we also have all of our notions. So we've got our crochet hook, our stitch markers, our tapestry needles, and our embroidery needle all inside of here. We've got this big bag of stuffing that we're gonna be using to stuff the inside of our plushes. And then here we have the safety eyes and the black embroidery floss we're gonna be using to make their faces. Alright, so now that we've checked out everything that's inside, let's go ahead and get started on making one of our cactus friends. So today we're going to be working in our booklet on the second cactus pattern, this one here in the coral pot. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so we're going to be starting on the cactus first, so we're going to need some of our green yarn from our kit. And we're going to get started by tying a slip knot because we need to chain 12 stitches plus 2 to turn. So to tie a slip knot, I like to take the tail of my yarn and fold it underneath the working yarn that I have. And I want to leave a little bit of a tail too while I work, so I'm going to make a little bit more. And then I'm going to take that tail and sort of thread it over the, the top of that circle that I've made. I'm kind of like pinching the tail around my working yarn. And then I'm going to take that tail and push it through that loop and then pull to tie a slip knot. So let me do that again again. Let me do that one more time so we can really get the hang of it. I'm going to take my tail. I'm going to go underneath my working yarn with it. And then I'm going to take it and send it through that loop that I just made and then pull to tighten it and once you have that you can take your hook and insert it inside of that loop and then just pull your tail to tighten. Then when we have that we need to go ahead and chain our 12 stitches so to chain we're just going to take our working yarn and pull it through and that makes a chain. So we're going to do that another 11 times. So that gives me my 12 chain and then from here I need to add another 2 chain to turn. Which gives me all of the stitches that I need for my chain. Then for round 1 or for row 1 we're going to start by half double crocheting and that's going to be in the fourth chain from our hook. But first, before we can even go through our, our third chain, or fourth chain, we need to yarn over. And then we're going to count one, two, three, fourth chain from my hook. I'll go through that chain, yarn over and draw up a loop and then yarn over and draw through all three. And that makes my first half double crochet. So I'm gonna continue half double crocheting in each stitch down this chain. All right, so that was my last half double crochet. So let's double check that we have the right amount of stitches. And our first stitch is actually the top of that chain that we made. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 half double crochet, so I'm ready to move on to row 2. So for row 2, we're going to chain 1 stitch to turn, and then we're going to flip our, chain, or our work over. And then half double crochet creates a third loop. You can see it here on the back of my work. So these are the normal loops that we would work in. For this row, we're going to be working a single crochet stitch in that third loop of our half double crochet. 
So to do that, I'm going to go to, of course, I need to work in the second stitch because that chain one counts as my first. So I'm going to work through the second half double crochet's back loop. So I'm going to go through that loop, yarn over and draw up a loop, and then yarn over and draw through both. And if you look, we have two stitches in our row. That chain one we made will be our first, and then this one here is our second. So we're going to continue single crocheting in that third loop all the way down this row. And our last stitch is going to be placed in the chain that we made to turn our row. So we'll just go in the top of that chain. All right, that wraps up row two. So for row three, we're gonna chain one stitch to turn. And we'll flip our work over. And you can see by crocheting in that third loop, we've left these loops on the surface. That's gonna add the ridges on our cactus. That's exactly what we want. So for this row, for row three, all we need to do is put a single crochet stitch in every stitch of this row. All right, there's my last single crochet stitch, which means I'm ready for row four. So for row four, we're going to chain one to turn, and then we'll turn our work. And for this row, we're going to be working in the front loop only. So that's going to be the loop on the surface of the side that we're looking at. So single crochet has two loops that we normally work through both. This time around, we're only going to be working through the front loop, which is the loop closest to the surface that we're looking at. So we'll go ahead and go through just that front loop and then make a single crochet. And if you look, that's we're leaving behind this little ridge here because we want it to have the same sort of look as the half double crochets loops do. So I'm going to continue working in the front loop only of this row. Right, and that wraps up row four. So for row five, I'm gonna chain two stitches to turn. Then I'll flip my work over. And then we're ready to start our repeating pattern over. So the cactus is made up of a row of half double crochet, a row of single crocheting in that third loop, a regular row of single crochet, and then a row of front loop only single crochet. So we're going to repeat that same pattern all the way until we get to row 28, because row 28 is going to be where we'll fold our work and close the sides together. We're going to continue that same four row repeat. So I will see you back here whenever, when I get a little closer to the end of row 28. Alright, so I am wrapping up the end of row 27 here, and I'm ready to do row 28, which is where we're going to take our work and we're going to fold it in half. So all these ridges here are going to be on the inside when we fold it. And then we're going to single crochet these two sides together by working through both layers of the fabric. So I'm also going to take my slip knot tail and work it in as I go too. So first I'm going to go through the back side of our fabric here and just single crochet. And then I'm going to go through both layers, grabbing some of the stitches from the back and some of the stitches from the front. I'm just going to single crochet those two together. Alright, so I've single crocheted both of these together. So I'm going to go ahead and cut 
myself a long tail because we're going to use this to sew the top of the cactus closed. And I'm going to pull that last stitch long. And I'm going to tighten that last stitch too. And I wove my slip knot tail in, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that so it's not in my way. Alright, so right now we're looking at the inside of the cactus, which is actually what we kind of want because we're going to be sewing kind of crisscross across the top of the cactus here to close it up. So we're going to go ahead and take that tail we just cut, thread it through one of our tapestry needles, and then we're going to take it so that the seam that we just made is halfway through our cactus, so you kind of want to fold the cactus open. And we're going to cinch the top of the cactus, these two parts together. So I'm going to sew straight through the other side and then whip stitch through one more time. Then we're going to crisscross again. And we're going to cinch these two sides together this time. So I'm going to go through halfway through the top of this side of the cactus. And I'll go through this side of the cactus as well. And then I'm going to whip stitch again the two sides together. And then we're going to do that one more time. Now that we've divided it into four, we're going to whip stitch these two and then these two together. So I'm going to go to this one next. So, and then over across, and then whip stitch. I'm going to pull each of these stitches pretty tight too. Alright, it looks like we've got one more to go. So we'll sew through the top of this one here. and then through the top of this one as well. And then also one more stitch to sort of lock those in place. All right, and then we can tie a surface knot. So I'm gonna loop the green over the surface of my work, grab a little of the fabric and then sew up through that loop and then tighten. And then we don't need to weave this tail in, we can just cut it. Because this is the inside of the cactus, so we can flip it inside out. And that tail will stay hidden inside. So here's the cactus. Now we're going to add the little strands of the little like spikes to it. So we're going to need the off-white yarn color. So before we do anything else with our cactus, we need to add its little spikes. So we're going to take this off-white color from our kit and I'm going to cut just a couple of short lengths. So the way I like to do this is I'll take it and wrap it around my fingers. That'll be a good start. I'm going to cut the bottom. And then I'm going to slip all those loops off and then cut just that one side. And that gives me some short lengths of this off-white color. So we're going to be making the spines on our cactus here. And the way I like to do it is I like to go through just any spot, but I usually try to kind of pick where the half double crochet is. And I'll slip my hook up through one of those, then grab a strand of that off white and then lay it so that it's the crochet hooks in the middle there. And then I'll pull that loop through 
and then pull both of those loops through the loop that I just pulled, and then tighten. And if you want it to be extra secure, you can also tie a square knot. Then we can take that stuff that we've cut and cut it short. And that forms a spine on our cactus. So I like to do mine, I'll do maybe two here, and then I'll offset and I'll do two here, and then go back to going two and two. So I'm just going to put some more spines on here so you can see kind of how I go about doing it. Alright, so that's my cactus and it has its spines now. I'm going to give these guys just a little bit of a haircut though. I think they're a little long. So there are my cactus's spines attached, so now we can add some stuffing to the inside. Alright, so the cactus is now stuffed. When we attach it to the soil, it's going to kind of cinch a little bit more, so it'll be nice and round. Alright, let's move on to the next part of our pattern. Alright, so next up we're going to be making the flowers for the top of the cactus. So we need the yellow and the coral colored yarns, and we're going to be starting with the coral color. So with our coral yarn, we're going to form a magic loop. So to make our magic loop, we're going to take our left hand, make a little bit of a finger guns here, pinch the tail to the lower digit of our index and middle finger on our left hand, then wrap the yarn around the upper digit, cross it over, wrap it around the lower digit, and wedge it in place. Then we'll take our hook, slip it underneath the top wrap, grab the lower wrap and pull it underneath. Then we'll flip both of our hands over and bring our hook up alongside the back of our hand. You can sort of touch the back of your hand here with your hook hand. Then take your index and thumb on your hook hand, grab both of the loops on the back of the wrapped hand, and you can let go and gently slide those loops off then we're going to want to take our working yarn and tension it. Grab that pretzel twist of our magic loop here, and then you can let go with your right hand. Then tighten up with your left hand's working yarn. And then focus, please. Then we can pull that working yarn through. And that locks our magic loop in place. Then we can untwist our tail. And we're ready to start in on our first row. So what we'll need to do is add five single crochet stitches to the inside of this magic loop. We have all five added. We're going to pull the tail of our magic loop. And then we're going to change color. So to do that, we'll cut a short tail of our coral colored yarn. So now that we have our coral color cut, we're ready to change colors. And we're going to do that by slip stitching to that first single, or, yeah, first single crochet stitch that we made in our magic loop. And then we're going to use our new color, our yellow, to pull through that stitch. So just pull it straight through both of those. Then we're ready to start making the petals of our flower. And we're going to do that by chaining three stitches. And then we're going to make a three double crochet bobble in the same space that that chain is coming out of. So we're going to start by yarning over and then going through that same space we slip stitched to. Then we'll yarn over and draw through a loop. 
yarn over and draw through two. And then we're going to repeat that same process of yarning over, going through that same space, drawing up a loop, yarning over and drawing through two. We're going to do that one more time, yarn over, go through the next, the same space, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. And then to finish off our three double crochet bobble, we'll yarn over, draw through all of the loops left on our hook, then chain one stitch. Then we're going to slip stitch in that same space that all of our petal is coming out of, and we'll chain three. Then we're going to make another th petal in the next stitch with another three double crochet bobble. Slip stitch that same space. Then we're going to just keep repeating that pattern of chaining three, three double crochet bobble, slip stitching until we have all five of our petals. Great, so I'm in my last petal, so I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into that same space all my bobble stitches are in. And then we're going to slip stitch to that first stitch to close off our petal and our flower. And then we need a medium tail in yellow to attach. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that last slip stitch through. And then we need to weave in a few tails here. So we need to weave in the magic loop and the coral tail left over from when we attached our yellow on. I weaved in my yellow tail already, so I'm going to go ahead and just give it a snip. So I'll take my tapestry needle and I'm going to thread it with my coral tails. I'm just going to weave them in underneath that double crochet bobble stitch that we made. It's a pretty good place to hide them. Same with my coral tail. I can trim them both. And we'll leave that long yellow tail to sew the flower on whenever we are ready to attach. Alright, so we need to make one more of these flowers so we can attach them to our cactus. Alright, I have both of my flowers, so let's go ahead and get them attached to the top of our cactus. So they're going to be sewn on so they sort of touch each other. And then I like to make it so that they're sort of stood up on one side. So let's go ahead and attach the first flower. So I'm going to attach my flower by whip stitching underneath into the cactus and then coming up in between each of the petals to attach it on. So here's my second petal. Once we're all the way around, we're going to send our yellow tail into the body of the cactus, so make sure you're in the cactus. And that's where we're going to tie our surface knot. So I'm going to loop the yellow over on top of itself, and then sew up through that loop, and then down into the fluff of the cactus. And I'm just going to leave that tail there because we're going to attach this to the soil and you're not even going to see it. So that's one flower attached. We're going to do the same thing with the other flower. We'll just attach it so that they're right by each other on the top of the cactus here. Alright, that's the flowers attached to the top of the cactus. Let's move on to make the pot. All right, so for the pot, we're gonna need the coral and the off-white colors from our kit. We're gonna start with that coral color, and we're gonna begin by forming a magic loop. And then for round one, we're gonna place six single crochet stitches inside of that magic loop. We have all six of those stitches placed. We can pull the tail of our magic loop 
and we're ready for round two. So for round two, we're going to be increasing in each stitch. So when we increase, we put two single crochet stitches inside of one stitch. So here's my first single crochet. I'm also going to mark that because it's the first of my round. And then I need to put another single crochet stitch in that same space. And then I'm going to continue putting two single crochet stitches in every stitch all the way around. Alright, so that's the last increase. I'm going to take my magic ring or my magic loop tail and I'm going to pull it tight one more time. And then I'm going to trim it, not off, but sort of close. Because I find that tail really annoying whenever I'm working around. Alright, so if we're ready for round three. In round three, we're going to start our first patterned increase, as you can see up here with these asterisks. So we're going to repeat everything inside of the asterisks in order all the way around. So we're going to start with one single crochet stitch and then we're going to increase in the next stitch and then we'll restart that sequence over and we're just going to keep repeating it until we get to the end of our round. Alright, so for round four we're ready to start another patterned increase. So we're going to be placing one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So when you see that two single crochet, that's not an increase. That's just to put one single crochet in the next two stitches. And then we're going to increase. And just like last round, we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. Right, round five, we're going to continue increasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. Followed by an increase. And then just like before, we'll repeat that same sequence all the way around. Alright, we're ready for round six. We're going to keep increasing by putting four single crochet stitches. So one in the next four stitches. Following that with an increase. And then repeating that sequence all the way around. Alright, we're ready for round seven. So we're going to start with five single crochet stitches, one in the next five stitches. Followed by an increase. And you guessed it, we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, we're ready for row 8, so we will put one single crochet in the next six stitches. And then, of course, an increase after those first six. And then repeat that same pattern all the way around. Alright, so for round nine, we're going to be putting a single crochet stitch in the back loops only of every stitch of this last round. So when we were working the cactus, we were working in the front loop, which if you remember was that loop closest to the surface of our work. The back loop is the other loop, the one on the other side of our stitch. So we're only going to be working in the back loop, and then we're only going to be putting a single crochet in each of them. So we'll put one single crochet in every back loop all the way around this row. All 
Alright, so for rounds 10 through 16, all we're going to do is put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. So that's seven rounds of just one single crochet. And I will see you when I get a little closer to the end of round 16. Alright, so I'm wrapping up round 16. And for round 17, we're going to be working in the front loops only because we're going to leave the back loops behind to attach the soil on. So just like we did with the cactus when we worked in the front loops only in single crochet, we're going to do the exact same thing here, just placing one single crochet stitch in each of the front loops of round 17. And we're ready to switch to our off-white color. So I actually need to undo my very last stitch. Because when we do a color change, we will finish the last stitch of the round with the new color. So in the front loop only, we're going to do half of our single crochet stitch. So we're going to go through that front loop, yarn over and pull up the loop. But then here, we need to cut our coral color and switch over to that off-white color. And just like we did with the flowers, we're going to pull the last single crochet stitch closed with our new color. So I like to lay my tails next to each other, and then I'll wrap my yarn around and pull through. And then round 18 and 19, we're just going to be putting single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around and in both loops, not just the front loop like we were. We're also going to work these tails in a little ways too. So I like to lay them behind my work, and then when I go in through my first single crochet stitch, I'll go underneath the tails too. Kind of like what we do when we start our magic loop as well. So I'm going to yarn over, drop a loop, draw through two, mark my first stitch, and then I'm going to keep working these tails in just adding one single crochet stitch. I'll work them in for a couple of stitches here. So I worked them in for maybe 10 stitches or so, so I'm going to go ahead and give them a snip. And then I'm going to keep working around so I will catch you back here whenever I get closer to the end of round 19. Alright, so I'm wrapping up round 19. And I'm ready to start round 20. So the way round 20 is going to work is we're going to be working in the space between round 18 and 19. So I'm going to slip stitch right here in that space between those two rows. So I'm going to be going through this stitch, so not here, but directly underneath, and slip stitching. I'm going to also mark that first slip stitch since it's the first one of my round. And we're just going to be working in this round here, adding a slip stitch to each of the stitches in between round 18 and round 19. So we're just going to keep slip stitching around. Alright, so I've just finished round 20, and so for round 21, we're going to be slip stitching in all of the tops of the stitches of round 19. So that's actually the very top of our work. Remember, we were slip stitching in between 18 and 19. So now we're going to be slip stitching in the tops of all of those stitches around. So we're going to go ahead and place our first, you'll have to kind of move your stitch marker out of the way so you can see it. We'll place our first slip stitch here.
I'm gonna go ahead and take my marker out and put it in that first stitch. It kind of crosses over here in the back, if you've done it. And then we're gonna just keep slip stitching around in the tops of all of the stitches of round 19. You can see this adds this really nice like ribbed pattern to the top of the pot and it's also going to help hold the pot open. So we'll just keep working around adding a slip stitch to each stitch. Alright, I'm on my last slip stitch. So I'm going to take my marker out and we're ready to fasten off. And we're going to fasten off by slip stitching to that first slip stitch that we made, the one that kind of X's over. So we'll just slip stitch through there. And then we're ready to cut ourselves a little bit of a tail. It doesn't need to be too long. We're going to pull that last slip stitch through and then tighten. And then we're going to wait to weave this tail end in once we have the soil attached. So we are ready to move on and get the soil attached to our pot. Alright, so we're going to get the soil attached to our pot. So we're going to be needing that dark brown that comes in our kit. But before we get started, we're going to be attaching the soil to the back loops that we left behind when we were making our pot. It was left behind in round 9. I'm sorry, it was left behind in round 17 when we were working in the front loops only. So I like to fold the top of my pot down so that the top of my, like the lip of the edge of the pot is just those loops. So you kind of roll all the way around to make sure you can see those loops. And then when we attach our soil on, we need to make sure we're looking at our pot just like this, like your eyes are looking at this side of the pot. You don't want to be looking on the inside because that'll make our soil be the wrong way. So we're going to hold our pot just like so. And then we're going to attach our hook and our yarn to any of these loops, just not the loops by our uh, tail left over from our off-white color. So we're going to attach by slipping our hook just through one of those back loops that are left behind. And we can get a little of our brown yarn and we're going to pull that brown yarn, I like to loop it over my hook, we'll pull it through and then we're going to pull the tail so the end not attached to our ball of yarn. We'll pull the tail through that loop that we just attached. And then if you tighten, that attaches the brown on. And then I like to work this tail in as I go, so I'm going to hold it behind, so I kind of pull it over this direction here. So then to get started, we're going to go through that same loop that we just went through. And then with our working yarn, we're going to pull up a loop. Now this loop, again, doesn't count as a stitch, because remember we don't count the one on our hook as a stitch. It's like a work in progress. So for our first round of the soil, we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next six stitches. So we're just going to grab the next loop that was left behind when we made our pot. Yarn over, draw through, draw through two. And then that's our first stitch of this round. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that one there. Then we need to make another five because we need to make six total. So once we have those first six single crochet stitches, we need to do a decrease. So like when we were making our pot and we did an increase, that's where we put two single crochet stitches in the same space. A decrease is where we're going to make one single crochet stitch take up two stitches. 
So to do that, we're going to go through our next back loop that was left behind, yarn over and draw up a loop, and then we're going to do that exact same thing, go through the next back loop only, draw up a loop, and then we're going to yarn over and draw through all three of the loops on our hook. And you can see that makes it so that there's one stitch taking up two loops. All right, so we're going to repeat that same sequence of six single crochet decrease until we get all the way to the end of our round. All right, so I'm ready for round two of my soil. So for round two, we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next five stitches. Once we have those first five, we're going to decrease. And then just like last round, we're going to continue that same sequence all the way around. All right, so we're ready for round three. Round three, we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. And then we're going to decrease. And just like the last two rounds, we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, so we're ready for round four. We're going to place one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. Then we'll decrease in the next stitch. And just like the last three rounds, we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, so we're ready for round five. We're going to put one single crochet stitch in each of the next two stitches. and then decrease. And just like before, we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, and then for round six, we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next stitch, and then a decrease, and then repeat that all the way around. Alright, so before we make our last decrease round, we need to add the face. So we're going to go ahead and pull that last stitch long, and then be really careful while we're working, the um, when we're embroidering the face, to not catch any of this here. Then we're going to go ahead and flip that lip of the pot back up. So you can see the soil sits down inside of the pot, and our cactus is going to sit on top of the soil. So let's go ahead and add the eyes first, but let's make sure we're going to add them to the same place. So this here with the tail left over from the top of the pot and the little jog is the back of our pot. So we're going to flip it this direction and this is where our face is going to go. So we can go ahead and grab those safety eyes from our kit and the little plastic backs that go with them. And then I'm going to take one of my safety eyes here and I'm going to use the stem to help me find where the eye needs to go. So our pattern's telling us that we need to put the eyes between rounds 15 and 16 of the pot at about six stitches apart. So we can count starting here at round one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we're going to place our eyes right there. You of course can move the eyes to be anywhere you'd like on your pot. My only advice is to make sure that your eyes go lower than where the soil is because we want to hide the backs underneath the soil. All right, so now that I have my first eye placed, I'm going to take my second eye and I need to count six stitches away from my first. And we're going to count the little holes as our stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll place my second eye there. Then once you have your eyes placed where you want, you can take the little plastic backs and snap them on. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of fluff to the inside of our pot. Again, be really careful not to accidentally get any of this brown yarn because we have one more row left to go. All right, so next we need to embroider the smile on. So we're gonna take about a quarter of that embroidery floss from our kit, and we're gonna thread it through our embroidery needle. So go ahead and just thread the end through the eye. Then we need to tie a knot at the end of our embroidery floss. And the way I like to do that is I'll take it and pinch it against my right hand, and then wrap it counterclockwise 10 or 11 times. And then I slip all of those wraps down over the eye of my needle. And I keep pulling, slipping until all of the wraps are at the very end of my embroidery floss. Then we're going to sew the smile on our pot here. And we're going to make a nice big smile. So it's going to have some stitches that go straight down right next to the eyes and then a little bit of a curve, and then a flat at the very bottom. So let's start by sending our needle down through that fluff and up next to the left eye. Again, be really careful not to get this here. And then we're gonna send a straight stitch down over just this row here. So I started kind of in the space between this row and I'm gonna just send a straight stitch down here. I'm going to repeat that on the other side as well. Then I'm going to send my needle over to where the bottom of that stitch is on my left side. Then we're going to sew kind of a diagonal stitch so from here to there to make the sides of our mouth. And of course, we're going to repeat that same thing here on the other side. And then we need to make one long straight stitch for the bottom of the mouth. So we're going to come back up through where the left side of the mouth is. We'll just sew one long stitch from here to there to connect the bottoms of the mouth. And I'm going to send my needle up into my fluff here at the top. So I'll pull. So there's the mouth. And then we're going to tie a surface knot just in the fluff of the pot here. And then we can weave that tail in the fluff and then out through just any random spot in the body, it doesn't really matter. And then while we're working on weaving tails in, let's go ahead and get the pot's off-white color tail woven in too. So we're going to go ahead and take that and thread it through the eye of our tap, our yarn needle. And let's just send one stitch underneath this slip stitch here. And then I'm going to sew one more 
here. And then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to send it into the fluff underneath the soil. Then we can trim both that off-white tail and the embroidery floss tail. And that is the face attached to the pot. So let's go ahead and finish up the top now. So we'll go ahead, reinsert our hook, tighten that loop down. And then our last round on the pot, which should be round seven, is just to put a decrease in every stitch all the way around. So there's my first decrease. I'm gonna mark it, of course, since it's my first of the round. I'm gonna keep decreasing. Once we've decreased all the way around, we can take our marker out, and we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. And then we need a little bit of a longer tail, because we're going to use this brown tail to sew our cactus onto our pot. So cut yourself a bit of a tail, and then we're going to pull that last slip stitch through, and then tighten. Then we're going to take that tail we just cut, we're going to thread it through the eye of our yarn needle, and then we need to sew through each of the six remaining stitches left on our soil. So we're just going to go underneath both of the loops for each of those stitches. Once you've sewn through all of those, just pull that tail tight, and that will cinch the stitches closed. I'm also going to tie a surface knot, so I'm going to loop my yarn over the surface, sew down into some of the fabric and then up through that loop, and then pull tight. And now we're ready to attach the cactus to the pot itself. So remember, the face is the front. so. When you are sewing your cactus on, it kind of is up to you where you want to have the flowers positioned. I personally like them to be kind of looking off this direction in either way. But if you like having one flower facing forward, that's completely up to you. Just keep that in mind as you sew your cactus on. All right, so let's go ahead and get our cactus attached. So just like with the top of the cactus, we're going to be sewing in a crisscross pattern so that our cactus sort of cinches at the bottom. So once you've decided where you want your cactus's flowers to be lined up with the face, go ahead and set your cactus on top. And then I'm gonna just start by taking my yarn needle and going through a bit of just the green bottom part of the cactus. Then I'm gonna grab a little of the soil. I'm actually gonna send my needle under the soil this entire way. And then up to another spot on the opposite side of the cactus. And I'm just going to keep grabbing a stitch, sewing it down, grabbing another random side of the cactus, pulling tight each time I sew. I'm just going to keep working around just like this until all parts of my cactus are attached to the soil. And then for a, like a final check, kind of rotate your cactus around, see if there are any places that aren't tacked down. I think I got everything on mine already. And once you've tacked down all the bottom of the cactus, you can tie a surface knot in the soil. So make sure that your yarn's coming up from the soil. We'll loop it over, sew up through that loop, and then we'll weave it inside of the soil and pot and out through just a random place. And pull tight and snip. And with that final snip, your potted cactus is complete.